What up, bro? <laughs> got the got the quarantine mask on, huh? That's a fact, bro. What's up with you, my guy? How you feeling? Man, I'm smooth. I'm smooth, man. What about yourself? I'm cooling, bro. You know, grinding, maintaining, and shit like that. You dig what I'm saying? Man, all right. No, it's the only thing we can do right now. You feel me? That's a fact, though. What's up with you, my guy? How you feeling, though? Man, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm still here. I ain't sick. My family ain't sick, so I'm good. That's all it's about, bro. Trying to stay safe, trying to stay corona free. And then that's really the main thing. Still get that bag up, too. You dig what I'm saying? For sure. For sure. Everybody good your way? Oh, everybody's good this way. The family's good. Um, everybody, um, everybody's healthy. Shout out to everybody who did lose anybody through the corona. I know my um, you know, my guy, he lost his co-worker and shit like that. So it's definitely a, a crazy disease. So definitely stay safe out here. You dig what I'm saying? But everybody's good on this side, which is a blessing. Yeah, yeah man. What's your This uh, shout out day by episode 28 with the homie Kize Fuliano, right? Uh huh. my God. Shout out. What What's up? All right. And this going to be a... Uh, this ain't, ain't going to just be on IG Live. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on Spotify. Anywhere you can uh, find your... Uh, your uh, podcast shit. Well, that's a blessing. That's a fact. I appreciate you for having me, bro. That's a fact. Man, we always start some shit on some positive jump, man. So I got this shit called Salute Me While I'm Here. A lot of times we wait for niggas to die to be like, you know what I'm saying? My man's was dope or she was dope and shit like that. So you, but the thing about it, just don't include your mom or your dad, like somebody like one of the homies or somebody that's cool that wouldn't expect the shout out. Yeah, um, Shout out, shout out my guy Fresco France. I just uh it's my like one of my best friends. We just had a conversation right now. Let's talk about the music game, catching up. You know, I'm definitely proud of him. Um losing weight and stuff like that. So shout out to my man Fresco France. Definitely proud of his whole his whole his whole way right now, his whole way, how he going and stuff like that. He's definitely staying focused, he's not drinking and shit like that, which is really different. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to my guy Fresco. I just talked to him like literally like an hour ago. We be like we just chopping up and stuff like that, just catching up because you know this quarantine. You can't be with everybody every day, so yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. That's so that's the one shit missing family, missing with the homies, and like that. Like, man, that should be hard. That's a fact, bro. She's crazy. This is real. Um, it's real different. You feel me? It's real different. I ain't, I ain't became a fucking alcoholic and shit, bro. <laughs> bro, it'd be like that because when you in the crib, it, it's not really nothing else to do. But now it's like, long as you know, like you know now. So now it's like, okay. Nigga, I'm about to cut this shit down a little bit. You dig what I'm saying? Hell yeah, for real, for real. That's a fact, because you're going to drink every motherfucking day. Man, what, With man? With this shit Hell going yeah. on. Nigga gaining weight and shit, though, all that. All that shit, yeah. So that's why I've been trying to at least have, like, you know, like how you know how we used to go outside. You had a plan, you know, yeah. drink only on the weekends and shit like that. Now you really got to do that shit now and really make your schedule around being in the crib situation. You know, if you want to go out, do a jog every morning, just get in the mind right, you dig what I'm saying? Because if not, you're going to, Falling in that shit right there, you're gonna go man. crazy, you know? Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. Well, shoot, man, we, we start off, man, on your come up, man, growing up. You know what I'm saying? How was it, man? Mom's dad in the house, brother, sister, how was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm from Boston, Mass, so I'm not familiar if you where you from, bro? Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. Oh, Detroit, okay, yeah. So you know, Boston, you know, violence is crazy and shit like that. You dig what I'm saying? Um and my mom, my nana um took good care of me and shit like that. My dad, you know, was in and out. Doing this thing, trying to find a way and shit like that, you know. Yeah. But um, I always been doing music though. Like music was always something that I always loved doing and shit like that. Like for example, I was like in uh the Bell program, it was like an after school program. And every time when we had like an interview, I mean not an interview, every time when we had like a show, like a talent show, something like that, I was always like the little kid rapping yeah. and shit like that. I had the braid looking like Bow Wow type of name, <laughs> you know yeah. arm shaking shit like that. So yeah. I was always doing that. So music was always. My um, like my passion and shit like that. But growing up was good, man. You yeah. dig what I'm saying? I was always fly. You dig what I'm saying? My mom made sure I had all the fly shit. Oh my god, little bro, he's actually in college right now and shit like that. Shout out to Pito. You dig okay. what I'm saying? So, you know, just trying to make a way, trying to make a way out because a lot of niggas do a lot of violence do be happening around here and shit like that. So you know, just trying yeah, to man, stay positive and shit like that. You know, that's what I was gonna ask you, dog. Like in Boston, like. Like every time I think about Boston, I think about like you know what I'm saying the Patriots and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Boston. Yeah, the dudes, yeah, the people don't show you, you know. The hood. Like I always wonder, like, is that shit racist down there? Like, how is it in Boston, dog? Yeah, it's I mean TV, TV only show you about like the sports and shit like that. TV never show you like the other side. TV only show you like downtown, Copley, all the good areas and shit like that. But it's like Detroit, bro. This shit, you know, you gotta keep your head up, your eyes open, you gotta be safe. Niggas, niggas got hoods out here and shit like that. You know, you gotta be real. You gotta be real in tune and really know yeah. what you because the violence is all time high right now, especially like the summertime and shit like that too. You yeah. know, so it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely no, not just 
all the glam that the niggas be seeing on TV and shit like that. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, I, I fuck with this, uh, this one podcast down there. It's called Fuck Your Podcast. These two chicks. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fuck I, Your I, Podcast. I heard about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm like, damn, I, I never really knew about Boston for real until now. Like, I know uh, you got a couple rappers. Like, I know Guru from Boston and shit like that. Yep. Yep, that's uh, a fact. Of course, uh, um, Benzino. Yep, 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 yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got mad upcoming artists too that's grinding, that's doing their thing too, even way after Benzino and shit like that. Shout out to them like Millsy because it's Stiz, Bia. Um, uh, my man Dose Music, he's going to come up right now. Kize Fuliano, he's going to come up. So, you know, niggas is grinding, though. It's definitely like a lot of talent out here too, you know, but I feel like people out, out, like I'll see that, you think what I'm saying? But now it's definitely getting way, way better. Yeah, so what you got at the crib growing up, man, you had mom and dad at the crib? Yeah, yeah, I had, you know, my mom and my nana was, um, like, my mom and my nana was, like, like this, and my nana, like, me and my nana was like this, too, so, my dad, you know, he, you know, he was, like, you know, he was in and out, like, in and out of jail and shit like that, trying to push it together and shit like that, so, you know, he tried his best, you know, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, but our, uh, our relationship now is way better than how it was before, because, you know, when you're younger, you really don't really understand, you feel yeah. me, about yeah, yeah, yeah. shit that grown men got to deal with and shit like that, but, you know, he's trying, they gonna say, but yeah, yeah. my mom, my nana was definitely like the two soldiers that was holding me, and my little brother down all the time. For sure, for sure. That's a fact. Oh, yeah. So about uh, in high school, dog. Like, how was you? Was you into sports, like, or was it all about music all the time? Now, high school, I was actually um, I played basketball. So I played my ninth grade year. I played JV. My ninth and my tenth grade year, I played JV. And then yeah. my um, my junior year, that's when I went to varsity and stuff like that. And then um, we used to play like I don't know. Um, we used to play like BNBL, like BNBL, like league over here, and stuff like that. In the summertime, we big ten, like pick teams and stuff like that. So I was definitely a dope basketball player, and stuff. I was a point guard and everything like that. I yeah. played in heavy leagues and stuff like that, which is uh, like was pretty dope. And then my senior year, um, I didn't play basketball no more because uh, like my coach was, he was like fuck with me and shit. Like he was on some other shit. You think what I'm saying? So I quit. Yeah, I quit the team and shit. I quit the team. So I quit the team and I just was working. Getting a bag up, swagging up, and shit like that. But basketball is still one of my favorite sports now. I still yeah, play yeah. ball and stuff like that too. But I used to play AAU too. I used to travel and everything like that too. So basketball was like my number one. Man, my hey, number that's kind of like, that's kind of like me. Dogs hooping, and uh, see, I got the wrong coach. That nigga said like, "Don't bring this Detroit ball in the suburbs." I was see, in the suburbs. see, like, fuck that, bro. You already started the shit wrong. You got, see, he already started that whole shit wrong already. You know what yeah, saying? yeah. Because I went to like uh, my first two years, I went to like a. All white school, pretty much. Right, right. You know, I'm coming there hoping he like, dog, none of that, none of that hood shit, basically. Yeah, see, oh my like that's how my bullshit. coach was like, like. I feel like if you're a coach, you gotta know your your uh your your your, your player personnel type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then once you already telling somebody that already coming in, you already fucking somebody's mindset up. So yeah, now yeah. in your mind, you probably don't even want to like, yeah, fuck this. Dude. You think what I'm saying? Yeah, because any little thing you do, he gonna criticize that shit. Exactly. I was watching the last dance actually too, like how Jordan. And Phil yeah, Jackson, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you've been watching it. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, hell it. Just a four. So just long story short, with that situation, like I seen how, for example, how Dennis Rodman he had to take vacations. You think oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Another coach probably would not be even man. They would have suspended him. Anything you dig fines and 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 everything. You feel me? Yeah. So like that was like that was definitely an eye opener for me. You feel me? Like coaches really don't really be really be in tune like that. And then that's really fucking my whole basketball shit up too. Because I was balling. I was balling. I was putting numbers up and everything. And I was starting too. And then one of the assistant coach, he actually, he benched me or he put somebody, he started somebody before me. Then now for my whole mindset, so I'm like, fuck these niggas, man. I'm out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Because I coach too, dog. And you got to know like, shit, you got to coach uh, different people, different ways, different players. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You got to know their personnel, brother. You got to know their personnel, yeah. bro. That's so, man, fact. I always ask this, man, especially, like, with you into music and stuff, a lot of times we get our music from our parents and shit like that. So, yeah. what, was your, what was your mom playing in the crib when they was cleaning up? Like, what was that stuff you listened to liking because of them? Okay. Oh, my mom used to play, like, um, like Jaheim, some yeah. old Jaheim, um, some, oh, fuck. I, I mean, I would say R. Kelly, but you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but still, so, he's still got Mary J. Blige. He still got classic music, though, even though he yeah, didn't fucked up shit. You yeah, he's still a music. dope artist. I feel like Luda said it the best. Like Luda's, um, Luda was on live like the other, the um, like a couple days ago against Nelly. Yeah, I saw that. He did a verse talking about, you know, he loved R. Kelly, but he won't trust him around his daughter. You think what I'm saying? Which is, he said it the best. You feel me? But R. Kelly, um, Mary J. Blige, um, uh, I'm trying to think who else. 
trying to think who else. Um, some I know, team, some, I know what uh, me, man. Like, I, I didn't hear, I wasn't like listening to rap, like for real, because my mom and dad wasn't playing rap for real. Only person my dad was playing was like Tupac. That's the only rapper I knew about. Tupac, Biggie, yeah, yeah. some soul music, some Isley Brothers. You dig what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Hell some yeah, Isley hell Brothers. Yeah. Um, some Styles P when he uh, he made that Get Hot joint. Yep. I remember that. Um, trying to think of more. Uh, Styles P to Get High. Matt, like Matt, like there's basically Matt soul, like soul music and some R&B music. You dig what I'm saying? Like if you did listen to rap music, it'd be like Fifty Cent or something like that. Yeah. You know, she played, like like a lot of Fifty Cent. Like she loved Fifty Cent. Yeah, you know, yeah, Dipset yeah. too. I got Dipset from my dad and my uncle. You dig no, what I'm saying? So we just people, we just talking about this. Niggas sleep on Dipset, dog. Like they hold. Oh them. man, dog. Oh man, that's a fact. Niggas are trendsetters. You dig what I'm saying? That's why. Yeah, yeah. With the with, the, with the with the fashion, with the lingo, with everything. All that, yo. That's a fact. So shit, man. How was it like after high school, man? What, what, did you go to college? Like, what was it like after high school? After high school, I had my daughter. So you know, um, after high school, I was like, I had to take something serious, and I wanted to do something that I loved and something that I liked. Yeah. I actually, people don't even know, I had, I was getting an honor roll for like the last. I, so I got an honor roll ninth grade, tenth grade, and then that's when I was fucking up in junior year because I was feeling myself and shit like that. Yeah, but yeah, but I had like a lot of scholarship offers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Which people don't even notice. So I had like a lot of scholarship offers, and um, but I, I didn't take it because I was just too, too, like too in tune and too involved with shit that was going on in the city, which didn't make like now I look back at it like that shit didn't make no sense. You dig what I'm saying? But which was a blessing I had my daughter after high school, and then that's when I started actually taking music serious. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I lost my nana like right at like right when when I was graduating um high school. Okay, which, like which was like another drive for me because you know like she wanna. Like, if I didn't go to college, I had to do something, you know, something that I would love and something that I'm really, I have passion doing. So that's why I chose to use it. You think I'm saying? And then um, after high school, too, I lost one of my best friends, RP, my man, Georgie. You dig what I'm saying? So that was another drive for me. So this is all after high school. Yeah. Me and my daughter, you know, me losing my nana, me losing one of my best friends. So yeah. I really had to get in tune and really take this shit more serious. You feel me? Sure. And this is when I was like 19. You feel me? Yeah. So that's when I really took music serious after high school. Yo, yeah, man, because that's the same shit with me, man. Like, 9th and 10th grade, I was on my shit. 11th grade, like you say, you start feeling yourself. Feeling yourself. Dog. Swaggy. You dig? I had, I had my son right after high school, too, man. Oh, my bad. Mm. I had my son right after high school. So, uh, it's like, once I had him, it's like, all right, man, you got to you gotta be for real. Because I went to college during that first year. But, sure, I knew I had baby on the way, so I couldn't focus. It was all about making money. Making money, that's a fact. Yeah. That's a whole fact. That's a whole fact, bro. That's... I definitely salute you. I definitely salute you um, to like to that whole situation because you gotta you gotta chase that bag, man. You gotta focus, and then that's yeah, probably yeah. the one of the hardest shit ever. You feel me? Man, for real. So is you and uh, that's your only kid? Yeah, yeah. I only got a daughter right now. Yeah, okay, she's seven. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's seven. Man, that's when them, you gotta get that pistol ready for. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm hit. Like the next couple years, got is yeah, got, man. Everything right to five. I'm gonna do some bad boy shit. You dig? Yeah, for real, for real, dog. How how you and the mom? Y'all together? Y'all cool? Like, oh yeah, so that's my baby. Yeah, okay. I was shit like that. So you know, it's a blessing. We've been together for like over like ten years and shit. You know, so it's definitely yeah. So I'm trying yeah. to keep it like that. You dig? Hell so yeah. yeah. So yeah. I know we we talked about uh, the music like you grew up on as far as like what your mom was playing, but when you started like the music for yourself, what was the music you came up on? Um, well, my uncle and my dad put me on Dipset Heavy. That's why I like Dipset so much. Yeah. Um, and then I used to, like, I just basically just jumped off their wave, like how my mom was playing 50 Cent. Yeah. I was playing 50 Cent and shit like that. Um, that was definitely even, classic, boy. Classic. All this shit was classic. Yeah. Like, the Give Us a Dotron era was crazy. Um, she used to play, my dad used to play DMX, actually, too. DMX oh, was that, one of my favorite rappers ever, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to DMX. DMX was definitely one of um, his favorites and shit like that. Um, and then I, I basically just like, I went, because you know, I'm only 26. So after when I got older, like I still was playing Dipset, but I still played like all the artists that was coming up too as well. Like um, I like RB shit. Like I like Chris Brown, like Trey Songs. I like RB shit too. Yeah. Heavy. Um, what else I was playing? Like I love Chris Dude. Brown though. I say a lot of, uh, man, a lot of niggas. Blew up after he got to his show Rihanna. If it was for that, like a lot of niggas when the blew up like they did, dog. Yeah, the energy. Yeah, that's a that like that's definitely a key point right there because the industry was like wasn't fucking with um Breezy around that time at all. You think know what I'm saying? So I definitely felt like he was getting blackballed, and um 
he's still, he's he's definitely still one of the biggest artists ever, but he definitely yeah, yeah. blackballed around that whole time. You feel me? And then that's a fact, yeah. bro. Because if he never got to that trouble, dog, he'd be up. He, he already up there, but just man, he, yeah. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I feel like that's the politics more side because niggas know, like we know, but the politics is always gonna not trying to like always trying to double and shit like that. But real, like real niggas know. You feel me? Hell that's, yeah, hell yeah. That's yeah, the and yeah, and fifty, like fifty was like, dog. That whole little time you had fifty, you had Jeezy, Ja Rule was that nigga too. Yeah. Rule, that's, like, that's the one thing about fifty. He knew what he was doing, dog. He eliminated the nigga who was who was that nigga. Like he was doing the same shit Ja Rule was doing. 50 was on some shit, bro. 50 was eliminating a lot of niggas, bro. Hell yeah. If you fuck with Jaru, he, he was getting rid of your ass. Like, for real. That's a fact. He wasn't fucking with shit. He was fucking with his ops at all. Hell yeah. That's why him and the game started beefing because the game was like, listen, nigga, I like these niggas. Like, like all right, yeah. Man. Yeah, and which is crazy because now when you think about it, like, like me being in the game now is like, you can't really get, like, being a fan and being in the game is too, like, it's too different shit. Like, now it's like, okay, what would you do? Yeah. Like that thing, you feel me? Like okay, it's just, like just because you don't like him or it's not like that's my buddy, buddy. But you yeah. gonna see niggas, bro. You know, like the industry yeah. is really small. You feel me? Like you gonna see niggas at the club or somewhere. You feel me? But that shit was really real, and I feel like the beef around that time was really some real beef type shit. You feel sure. me? Yeah, yeah. Real, so it was crazy. Like you got problem, like with somebody. Like niggas used to make DVDs. With hip hop beef, like the smack DVDs. Hell yeah, I remember that shit. Yep, yeah. that shit. That's a fact, bro. So that shit was real right? um, at that time. Real, real. But now the beef now is now like niggas is capping a lot. Yeah, niggas like all on goddamn Instagram talking shit, Twitter, like that shit weak, man. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's real beef, like trust me, you're going to see that person. Like I know these niggas have seen each other, ain't that goddamn thing. Ain't though. nothing capping, bro. That's ain't. why beef back then was real. Niggas was dying. Like people was getting hurt. That's a fact, bro. This shit, like this shit was niggas was dying. Niggas was getting killed. Niggas was getting robbed. They seen your man, they gonna go see your man's. If you ain't dead, they gonna take that nigga. Like, it was some real shit going on, bro. You think what I'm saying? So, yeah. it's been crazy. That's a fact. Well, shit, man, let me, uh, what's the first, uh, CD you brought with your own money, dog? The first CD I brought with my own money is crazy because me, my nana, and my, and my, uh, and my mom and my little brother used to go to, uh, to, uh, to, um, Old Country Buffet every weekend. So, <laughs> Old Country mall. Buffet. DJ Chase, what up, fool? Oh. So um, it was a mall. So Best Buy was really like like right in the mall and shit. So I used to go take my nana's money or take my mom's money because I still didn't have money yet. You dig? So I used to take my nana's money and buy um the Dipset CD. I think okay. I used to buy the Diplomatic Community. I bought those. Classic, classic. A four niggas don't even know. You dig what I'm saying? Man. Niggas don't even know. So um, I bought Cameron Killer Season. I bought Man. that with my own money. Like right now at my crib, at my mom's crib. I got a whole case of all Dipset CDs, yeah. like all classics and shit like that. Like I used and to. Yo, make it's funny that you said shit because looking at look, looking at your uh your your uh Instagram page and listening to your music, you, you it seems like you got some of your influences from Dipset, dog. I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a fact, man. Like like how I do my writing process, I take shit from everybody and then try to put it in mind. You know what I'm saying? I feel like being a student of the game, you got to watch people who came, but but like before you and oh, see. Yeah. How they did it. Like, I watched everybody interviews. I watched niggas shows and shit like that. Like, just studying. You feel me? Like, studying, like, the whole game and shit, you know? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dog. That's a fact. I appreciate that, though, bro. That's a fact. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because the first, man, the first album I bought my own money, dog, was, uh, I was brought up on Cash Money, dog. So my shit was Lil Wayne. Shout out to Cash Money. Shout out to Weezy. Weezy's my nigga, too. Man. You feel me? I was bumping yeah. nigga. I was bumping Jay Quan too. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jay Quan. What was that, um, what was that nigga? That, uh, what was that? Hood Hop? Hood Hop. Nigga, Tipsy, too. Yeah, yeah. That motherfucker beat me? without code too. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a Hell fact. Yeah. Well, shit, That's man, a what? Fact. We, let's get into your your come up and your music, shit, dog. What? First off, what made you want to uh, start rapping, dog? Was it like, some, um, some like I said, uh, huh? Uh, was it something you heard, or was it something you like? Damn, I like I like this shit, bro. To be honest with you, it was something I definitely was hearing, like, cause. I was like a big Bow Wow fan too, I, like like at a time, like you know, I'm a big Allen Iverson fan. Yeah, so you know, yeah. the jerseys and the braids was was a, like was a force around that time. You feel me? And then sure. I used to do the Harlem Shake and shit like that. Like really, just um being an entertainer. You feel me? So when I used to see that shit, I used to be like just like, oh shit, I could do the same shit. But me being young, I used to always just do it. Yeah, like, without even just you know like there, I was like like it was just in me. You, you dig what I'm saying? So it was just like. And even when I said earlier, I used to do some shit like when I um, every time when we had talent shows 
or when I was in summer camp, I was always a little kid rapping. You feel me? Yeah. Like, no one ever told me to, yeah, bro, you like you should rap or you you should do this. I always did it because it was always in me. Yeah. So I feel like just watching it, hearing the music, and um, that like really got me inspired to like really take it serious and really doing rap and really been doing it since I was like younger. Like me and my little brother, you like used to dress up and um and and um act like we was like in movies and shit like that. You think know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like we do shit like that. You feel like I used to have a journal at my mom's like like, like I had a big ass journal writing fake like fiction stories. Like I'm yeah. already in the game already, which is crazy. I wanna find that book too. That's just yeah, crazy. Yeah. You dig? Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. That's yeah. a fact, bro. That's I see, you know everybody it be easy because I, I do music too though. So okay. it, it be easy like I know when I first started, though, like, the funny shit behind my shit, the only reason why I started, though, was when my yeah. girl, when my girl this time was pregnant with my son, dog. That's the only reason why I started. Mm, you got motivation. You yeah. got motivation, right? Yeah, because I always like music, but I'm like, I ain't no rapper, like, you know what I'm saying? But then my cousin was like, dog, that's, 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 that's record. I'm like, nigga, I don't know how to rap. He's like, dog, let's try it. So I was yeah. just trying this shit. The more I did it, dog, I'm like, damn, I like this shit. You feel me? It's dope. But I got asked this, like, Whenever you just doing that shit at the crib, it's easy. But how was it that first time in the studio, though? Like, Oh, that's a good question. Um, The first time in the studio, my first song, when I started taking music serious, yeah. it was started from the bottom. Um, the um, Drake started from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did a remix to that. And um, I felt like I killed it. But now when I hear that shit back now, it just, it wasn't hitting like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, you know, it's something like just in tune, like right there. But, um, you know... But me, like, like recording process was was cool and shit like that. But it was also probably like the engineer and shit like that too, yeah. and stuff like that. But um, it was it was definitely a good experience. So like, I, like I can't say I had a bad experience with it, but definitely like the song, I thought it was like a smash hit, but it definitely wasn't a smash hit and shit like that, you know. So I kept getting better and get like getting my metaphors better and, and really, you know, getting in tune with it more, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that's how it was with me and my boy dog. We we uh we think we doing some shit. I was happy as hell that his uncle dog kept it real with us, like dog. That shit trash. Right. Like I was happy, right. dog, because like we was gonna take that shit and actually perform it, dog. Yeah. And he was like, "Nigga, don't do it. Like, nigga, y'all shit is trash. Y'all need some help. Y'all gotta keep on doing that shit. Like, y'all gotta keep practicing." And you, That's a fact. I used to give up on myself, like, "Oh shit, I don't. It don't work. I quit." But right. that shit, I'm like, "Nigga, fuck. It. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get better with this shit for real." Right. That's a oh, yeah. yo. That's a blessing, bro. Cause you got to keep on. You got to keep on going. You got to keep on being motivated and shit like that. Which yeah, is yeah. like, it's so hard when you first start because you really just really in it. But now when you see, it's like, okay, you got to keep on going. You got to keep on doing. It. If you miss one shot, you got to keep shooting the shit. You think what I'm saying? Yeah, it's funny you saying that you rapped over uh that one beat, but uh, Drake beat. I, mm -hmm. My first song I tried to write over was um fucking Mike Jones. Back then they didn't want me. Mike Jones. I'm up in that situation. I was Mike Jones. Up in Mike Jones shit too. Nigga, Mike Jones. Nigga. How was that? How was that? That was, man, terrible. <laughs> it was terrible, though. I did not sound like Mike Jones in that bitch. <laughs> That's funny shit. That's funny. So, shit, what's some, uh, what up, what up, Save Detroit? What's some shit that you need, like, when you're in the studio? Like, some people need people around. Some people like to be by yourself, drinks. Like, what you need in the studio when you be, you know, go record? I definitely need, like, some, you know, some L so I can get in my zone. I just, like, like I, I, um, I can actually feel it more and yeah. shit like that. I really, I could do some shit like just me and an engineer. You feel me? I really like it was just a bit like if my foolies come through, they could come through and shit like that for some like for some motivation and shit like that. But mostly, I just need some L. You know, I be off the addies and shit, so I be saying like like focus and shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I like focus and like being up. So I just you know, and then if I get in the studio, I have all my songs written down already. So okay. once, once I get in the studio, I already um have my shit written down. So. Some, like some people don't know, like sometimes some like some niggas be freestyling and shit when they get in the studio. Yeah. But nigga, I don't got my own studio, so I pay for studio time. You think what I'm saying? Exactly. So I can't, so I just can't go in there and just be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna just work from there. Nah, I gotta have my shit organized, have all my shit written, and then when I do go to the studio, now I'm just focused on how my sound sounding. You 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 dig what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cause you don't wanna waste that money, dog. Niggas charging how much an hour. You don't want to waste your time in that, you know, playing around. I, I like to have my shit already ready, like, so I can just run that bitch and drop it and ain't got to worry about messing up and all that shit. That's a fact, bro. That's a fact. I love being organized and shit, like, just being organized. Because that's just already a process just, re like, recording. Because you might have to throw some olives on. You might have to do, like, five to ten takes and shit like that. But now, nigga, just imagine when niggas who don't be having, um, who don't be having, um, that shit written down. Yeah. Now, 
Thanks. Your verses, that's you wasting time and you wasting money and shit like that. But that's you know how people work, you know. Yo, you had spent about two, three hundred dollars on a motherfucking one song. With one song, and then, and then mind you, and the song's not even done yet. Yeah, you feel me? The song's not even done yet, which yeah, is crazy. Yeah. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. So, so no. see, what, what uh, what uh, when was it at a time before that though? With this yeah. whole Corona jump, are you recording or you just writing? Well, well, that's a good question, bro, because. When it first, like when it first happened, like when the first Corona shit happened, I was kind of beyond with you, like the first, first month, like yeah, first month, I was kind of stuck, like damn, niggas can't be in the studio. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I kind of had a writer's block, but luckily, before this shit happened, I had so much shit written down in my phone because I was just think about some shit and just start writing and just put that shit right in my notes. You dig know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So um. Now I just actually went to the studio like two days ago because I oh, shout out to my man Dolce Music. He put me on to Infinite Recordings, I believe. Shout out to my man um Steve. He um he just did a session two two like two, three days ago. And this is my first session and since this shit happened. So yeah. I'm gonna say what, three months? You know yeah, what I'm saying? So now we go fast forward from here. Now I'm starting writing more. I got actually um three songs I just got done uh three days ago and shit like that. So yeah. now I'm back in the studio. You no, know, stay like Corona free. Obviously, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Trying to stay Corona free. Um, but now I find a dope studio and finding that dope quality sound and shit like that. So now I'm back in the studio. Now I'm back writing. So I. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm saying the first two months couldn't write shit. But I wasn't thinking because this shit was, shit was crazy. Yeah, you know? yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dog. Like, yeah. Hard. I know you got um, on your bio, you said you got the, uh, what is it, Fully Season? Coming out, yeah, Fully Season coming out. I dropped Just Fooling Around EP last August, which is still doing numbers now, yeah. and I still been promoting that shit too heavy. But yeah, Fully Season definitely coming out, sounding crazy too, bro. Yeah, man, because when I was listening to that shit, like I like uh, I, I like that song Good Times, and then I like that mm. I watched your uh, video. Uh, was it Foolery? When y'all was Foolery. Like, using Miami. Yeah, was I was in Miami with a bike joint. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it, big, bro. one thing I do, I do people about you, dog. You. You you be on some straight ass beats like dog. What your beat process like? How you go through that? Like you go searching for it or what? Um, yo, it's crazy how you say that, bro. Thank you for everything too. I appreciate you. Um, for the beat process, I feel like like some of my people tell me I don't pick good beats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sometimes, like for some songs, but then I feel like I do pick good beats sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, just for example, the foolery song and the good time song. My man Rod two one two. He produced two of them, um, two of them joints. He's from Tennessee. Okay. I met him. I met my man Rod when he came to Boston one time. And shit, we was working together and shit. You feel me? Yeah. So, um, I, so I buy all my beats and shit like that. I buy all my beats. I make sure I own everything because you know, right now you can't put no song on Apple Music or Title or Hell Spotify no. if you don't own a song or yeah. own a beat. You dig what I'm saying? So now I like working with upcoming producers and shit like that's on the cover like myself. Yeah. And um, just picking the whole beats and shit. Like, it's, it's definitely when I'm in the zone. Like, for example, like, the Good Time song is just basically, long, like, just go out, have a good time, with, like, with some good people, get some drinks and shit like that, you know? More like a chill vibe that everybody could get in tune with, you know? For and sure. then that beat, when I heard that beat, that beat was just trying to have a good time. I just heard a melody right there. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, with the dope. And the Foolery joint, when I heard a Foolery beat, that shit, like, the, like, his, like the title of the song was yeah. called Go Dumb. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then if you really hear the beat, it says go dumb, dumb, dumb. Like, it, like, it bangs. You think what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I heard that shit, that shit was a force me beat. Like, that shit was crazy. So I definitely copped that off him and shit like that. Then that's how I got that beat. So it's basically like how I'm feeling. You feel okay. me? How I'm feeling. But I feel like now, beats is definitely probably like the number one one heavy thing now because people want to bump. Like, even if they don't even understand your lyrics and shit like yeah, that, they yeah. hear that beat. Yeah, you for feel sure. Me, bro? Like, motherfucker. Don't be saying a goddamn thing. Like, for yeah. the most part, dog, with music, like, as long as you got a straight hook and a straight beat, you, you lit. Hell. <laughs> you lit. You lit, bro. You lit. If you got a straight beat, a straight hook, and then you got the right engineer, nigga, you a motherfucker, you going crazy. Hell yeah. You know I mean? Let me ask you this, dog. I ask everybody this. Like, when did you start feeling yourself? Like, you know what? Like, I'm dope at this music shit for real. Oh, I've been I've been feeling myself since I was little. <laughs> <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? I, like, I've been feeling myself since I was fucking, um, and fucking, like, when I first started like did a rap like when I was doing like when my man used to do the grinding beat on the motherfucking table oh, and shit table, like that. Man. You Are dig? You like, <laughs> like that's when I started really feeling myself. But as really being a recording artist though and really being in a in a game, I started feeling myself when I was um 
when I did my first song, I feel like my first like a song that niggas was like in tune with. It's two songs. I did a song with Hell Rail called Ball. And this is when my like daughter first got born and shit. And this is I'm not sure if you heard about the whole Boston Marathon shit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, I did. Yeah. So this is all around the whole time because my daughter's birthday is April uh, 15th and my birthday is April 19th. Oh, yeah, that's so, my brother's birthday. See, April 15th, my brother's birthday. Every baby is a blessing. That's a fact. Yeah. Um, so long story short, that situation, all that shit like, was going on. You feel me? And this is when I was really getting my career. You know, niggas started taking me serious when I had a Hell Real feature. But yeah. then after that, I did a song called Cold Hearted. And the Cold Hearted shit, everybody, like, I seen everybody like bumping to it, singing with it, you know, it was catchy shit. So that's when I said, okay. Now it's all about just finding the right engineer, getting the right sound. We already got the look already. Here. Like we already got the way we like we already got the swag already. Now it's all about just doing step one, step two, all the next steps and shit like that. You feel me? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Yeah. Now, now I see you like I said when we first uh, was talking was over the DM and you had sent me that uh, talk that talk. Uh uh-huh. Like so with that, I just dropped that joint. I just dropped that joint. Oh yeah, it's dope. Once, once this uh, virus stuff over, you gonna drop a video for it? Yeah, bro. It's so crazy. Thank you for um. Thank you for liking it. I appreciate that. Um, fucking, um, the talk that talk video. I kind of want to shoot that shit like ASAP. To be honest yeah. with y'all, I, I want to be to shoot that shit ASAP. But obviously, like social distance type of wave. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. But I, yo, that video definitely coming out for talk that talk. A speech to my bro, don't say music and shit like that. Um, I can't wait to shoot that video. I got a whole concept, a whole theme with that video, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, crazy, bro, crazy. Well, shit, man. When you uh, when you gonna drop? When you gonna uh, drop the EP? Uh, I'm going to drop the Foodie Season EP. It was, it, bro, it's so crazy because this whole Corona shit, like, just pushed everything back. Hell yeah, I can imagine, yeah. though, with the shows and everything. Yeah, with the shows and everything, with the whole promo. But now um, I had to really sit down and really come up with a whole new, different marketing plan. You dig yeah. what I'm saying? Sure. Now, I don't have a real date for Foodie Season yet, but it's definitely coming out soon. It's definitely going to come out, like, summertime. Because, yeah. um, like I told you, I just left the studio, like, three, like, uh, three days ago, and I got some summer records on yeah. the food. So, you know, and right now streaming is like the numbers for streaming is getting real high because, you know, everybody is staying home or everybody can't really. Yeah, so you said the crib listening to music and shit. Like. Everybody want to listen to new music. So it's like a blessing and curse at the same time. So flu season definitely dropping soon, bro. I definitely got some bangers on there. Yeah. Yeah, my brother. That's a fact. So you think, uh, like, I know it's the last EP was like five songs. Like, you think that's the new wave as far as, like, because my shit I dropped was like five songs. Like, you think that's the new I wave? That. I gotta hear that. You gotta send me that ASAP. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do that shit soon we get off here. That's a fact. Um, oh, shit. Oh, my bad, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying, um, like the whole five song shit is kind of dope because it's people make music every day. You feel me? It's people you can hear tons of music every fucking day. Everybody, yeah, every, everybody's a rapper now. Literally, niggas who <laughs> wasn't rapping who can't rap, but the niggas are rapping now. They, like yeah. it's not even it's not even like niggas are rapping just because they see another nigga rapping and think they could do it. Niggas don't really got the shit in them. But um, I, I did five songs in that last EP because it was just pointing out there, and I call that shit the appetizer. You dig what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, shout out to New Shine Studios. Shout out to um, Jay Numero and shit. He produced the EP. Um, that was just something throwing out to the fans and shit like that, throwing out to the people to actually take me serious and have an appetizer for it. Because five songs, I feel like is people like people have um, the fucking span. Like their span is so short now. Hell yeah, hell you yeah. You feel me? Hell like yeah. the span is so short now, so niggas really don't want to hear three minute songs no more. Niggas want to go. No, it wasn't straight to the point because you remember back straight in the day. To- it used to be three verse songs, nigga. Three that's a fact. It, it's be long as shit, bro. Nigga, you're not listening to three verses no more. That's a fact. You mean, bro, you listen to probably like two minutes. Yeah. And then in a blessing cursor off that shit, it's like now, now streaming is shit so lit. So it's a two minute song. The song is so lit for two minutes. Now they keep on pressing it. You yep. don't hit that motherfucking button for that song. You yep. dig yep. what I'm saying? So now that's more strange for you and shit like that. But my next EP food season, I'm going to have 10 joints on there. Just to, yeah. you know, and then I'm just doing that as in just like being in the game and just showing the game, you know, just catering to it and shit like that, you know? Oh, yeah. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm definitely got to do 10 bangers on there and prove myself as an artist because I'm still proving myself as an artist every day. You for sure, I mean? for sure. Yeah, I think like... Kudafi, like, yeah, what think up? At the most, it's probably like 15 songs, dog, because niggas really ain't about to really listen to nothing more than 15. Like, it'd be hard yeah. for a nigga that you know who got more than 15 songs. Yeah, you got to be... <laughs> 
That's a fact, big bro. You gotta be on already for niggas to be hearing thirty songs because nigga Breezy he drops the last year he dropped. I think he had a two. A two dog. Fucking... <laughs> I had to listen to that bitch in portions, dog. Like nigga, like bro, niggas ain't like nigga. If you ain't on already, niggas not hearing no thirty songs from you, my brother. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And that's just how the game is right now. Niggas not even buying CDs no more. Like this is how the game is. So niggas are not. You know, and I, I ain't gonna lie, dog. I kind of miss like when you open up a motherfucking CD, dog. Yeah, that feeling. And shit. Feel that me? feeling. Yeah. Oh, bro, it's crazy how you say that because I always like like how I told you I used to cop the CDs and shit, right? Yeah. I used to always read the books. Hell always yeah. read the credits because the credits were like so far. Always looked at the pictures. Yep. Man, shit like that, you know. Else, you, like to me, like Cash Money and No Limit used to have some dope ass CDs, dog. <laughs> that was a feeling. That was definitely a dope feeling, bro. That's a fact. Hell yeah. Well, let me ask you this, though. Like, with you uh -huh. being in the music, man, what's some high and some low moments since you've been making music? High and low moments? Um, The low moment to see, because everybody's not who they say they is. You dig yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that, that's for real. That's like, you know, like, niggas be trying to scam you, or you will pay for some shit, and then you don't get the full, the full thing that what you really paid for and shit like that. Like, that's the lowest shit ever. Yeah. As being a um a, a upcoming artist, and then that's some shit I had to deal with. You think I'm saying who's real, who's fake? For sure. As as far as promoters, as far as uh managers, as far as uh people who's um just doing social media promotion, shit like that. Like people be scamming out there. You think I'm saying? I got scammed a few times. You feel me? And then that's really and then that's really like the whole the crazy part has being an upcoming artist because you're so thirsty trying to just get this, get that, get this, yep. get that. Yep. Now, when I got older, I understood, like, don't ever, don't always jump on that first opportunity. Like, at least study it and, and, and sit down and, and, you know, look it over. You feel yeah, it's like, sure. it's like fucking shit. Like, it's like, you got to look shit over. You think I'm saying? And I didn't look shit over at first. You think I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers told me they could do this and that. I sent them the bag. Never heard from them. It's yeah. like that, you know? But, and then it's crazy because people not going to. A lot of people not gonna uh, show you that or tell you that or teach you that. Like, you, oh, yeah, like, but for most part, it's just trial and error, dog. Exactly. You think what I'm saying? Well, like those are the definitely the low points. You gotta watch out for the scammers. You gotta watch out for these club promoters. Like nigga, you could pay to open up for an artist, and then you don't even be backstage with the artist. You be in the motherfucking crowd or <laughs> perform before this nigga even come. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, Horny. You dig what I'm saying? So that's some shit I learned. Like that's the lowest shit. But my high points was when I um when I I was in the Double XL artist to watch it. Like that was really dope for me. My uncle bought like ten copies and shit like that. I bought like a couple copies. Like that was dope because I was a big Double XL fan. You know? Yeah. That was dope. And uh, watching my first videos and shit like that too. Like just seeing me on my fucking YouTube or seeing me on yeah, Google. Man. Just you know, like just you know, like searching for yourself. Like oh shit, I'm on Google. Or you did. Sure. So yeah. that's like the, yeah, like that's definitely the high keys joint right there. And um, just you know, and and, and making good music and. Having people hit you up and saying that you motivate them, that you inspire them, because that's really yeah. what being an artist is. Like uh, an artist should change somebody's mood. For you sure, for sure, yeah. Because I always say, like, dog, when you music help out a lot, dog. Like when you go through some shit for real, like, bro, I, match the world with no music, nigga. <laughs> fuck up, man, for real. Fuck M up. Music and fucking sports, dog. For me, dog, like, that's a fact, man. Like, nigga, you can listen to some music, dog, from the past, and you can automatically put yourself where you was at that day. You feel me? Exactly. If you was in a relationship around that time, nigga, you know, right. with somebody at that time, like, all that shit, bro. Hell yeah. Like, you, your, your parents, nigga, your girl, where you, the homies, like, you gonna think about yeah. something. Hell yeah. That's a so fact. So, we do is always... We about to say, bro, like, my bad. Are you... I oh, know you good, you good. Are you looking to, uh... Stay independent? Do you want a deal, a partnership? Like, what's your ultimate goal as far as that? Yeah, my ultimate goal with that, bro, oh, I'm definitely trying to get, like, a partnership deal, endorsements and shit like that. Not on record labels and shit, because, you know, record labels be raping niggas and shit like that, you know? So, um, yeah. I actually did sign a publishing deal uh, last year with Jukebox Records, South of Jukebox Records. So, basically, people who don't understand what publishing deals is, basically, like, um, you get your music in TV and films and um, video games and shit like that. So, you know, royalty type shit, you know? So that's why I've been oh, yeah. learning. This shit's dope. So I did that shit last year. I haven't got my first placement yet, but um, we got some shit in the works. Because, you know, shows, like, they be, like, it's like it's all about timing and motherfucking months and shit. Some different shit that, you feel me? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. That's for, like, more publishing deals and more endorsement deals, bro. Like, some shit that I'm going to benefit from. Like, niggas be getting record deals. And be honest with you, right now, 
record labels is probably like the last the last thing you like you should do because yeah, everything's hands on now. You feel me? Like, like dog, even with this fucking virus, that show you like nigga, you can do this for your own. You feel me? Your like, own man. Even with this virus shit going on, like even like this shit, like what we doing right now, this like this is the new normal right now. You dig what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Which is super dope because people could still stay in tune. But like how like how so I feel like everybody's um getting better with it because like the first month, two months, we wasn't doing this shit like this. Man. Like you feel me? I was I was a little <laughs> heated because I love like in the city, like I'm gonna start doing this shit like now. Like I'm gonna start doing it twice a week. One day I'm gonna do it in the studio where we record face to face and then I'm gonna do shit like this for people out of town. Definitely, bro. It's definitely, it's definitely a dope platform. It's oh, real yeah. different because, especially if you had people who's following your whole podcast way before, yeah. now they want to see more content from you. You dig what I'm saying? Like they want to see you talk about these topics and shit. So that's why the Corona shit is a blessing and a curse. Like, like that's why you gotta. It, it, it brings you more um, creative side out. Like you gotta be more creative. Hell yeah, you, know you know do. I mean? You got to. You got to find you got different to. ways to get your shit seen. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a fact. So, with your music, man, we kind of touched on a, l- a little bit, but like, as far as Boston, like, do yeah. you, um, do you feel you get enough support from your city? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, I feel like to answer that, to be honest with you, niggas catch on later. You feel me? A lot of people catch on later. You feel me? A lot of people, um, people, a lot of like, you know, people hate on you because you know you're another artist from their city because you they actually know you or some shit like that, but. Majority of my fully people, like my fully fans, I, I like I could name them and shit like that. Like they've been supporting me, and, and, like every time when I drop a record, they fuck with it and shit like that too. But Yo. you know, it's always gonna be hate everywhere. You know what oh, I'm hell, saying? Hell, hell, everywhere. Hell, so life ain't right without that shit, though. Exactly. I've been getting that's a fact, fast. So I've been getting hated on since I was in kindergarten. So <laughs> <laughs> like, like all facts. So I'm not, I'm not really mad at that. Like niggas who, who never, like I was little when niggas was hating on me and shit like that. So mm. like that's what it is. You feel me? It's like. I compare this shit like um, running for president type shit because you know you like you need like you need a lot of cities, just okay. not one city. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Me? But just the Boston culture, I feel like people don't support you just because they know you or just because you're from their city, which is like from everywhere. Probably like Detroit. No, I would say that a lot of times, dog. You get more love outside because yeah. everybody in your city trying to do the same shit, so you fight for that top spot. That's a fact, and bro, the shit social media. Is 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 blowing all that shit away? Because yep. now, nigga, you could be in a motherfucking crib, literally, especially now. But even before, before whole this that that um this whole COVID shit happened, you yeah. like, bro, you could be in a crib sitting down with a laptop and a motherfucking uh a fucking camera, yep. and you post that shit on social media and do these hashtags and hit these people up from everywhere. That's yep. a new fan from here. That's a new fan from that's a new. You don't even have to come up from like the whole game is different now, anyways. Hell yeah, you know for saying? sure, for sure. The game different now, so niggas don't even need like you need your city, obviously, like after shit like that. But yeah, nigga, if you pop on social media, you pop on social media, and then you really get in tune with the people who you like on social media and shit like that. Then lit, Hell but yeah, yeah. the hate gonna come from everywhere. Hell yeah, that's why I try like dog. I try to fucking around and like I said with you in Boston. Like my last two interviews been with people from Sacramento, like. Trying to make sure I branch off, so it's just that's dope. Straight. That's yeah, that's super dope, bro. You're definitely doing your whole thing, cause like, like, and, and then that's what you gotta do, cause artists like me want to be on podcasts, want to touch new people, want to like touch new cities and shit. Like, I never even been in like Detroit yet, but me, me, and you, and we doing yeah. this shit yeah. now, yeah. nigga. When I go up there for a show, nigga, yeah. I, nigga, I, nigga, I hit you up, we yeah. in tune. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah, cause for sure, yeah, if you ever come to this bitch, nigga, we gotta do that shit in person, nigga, for real. Yeah, that's a fact. Same shit. We come to Boston, or wherever we, 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 we um fucking meet up. That doesn't matter. Hell you yeah. feel me? Hell you yeah. dig what I'm saying? So that's what it is, bro. City's gonna always gonna not support you fully, hundred percent at first, but they are gonna catch on. Oh yeah, everybody sure. gonna catch on. Hell yeah. As, long, as long as you apply that pressure, dog, they gonna they got they got to. They got to. That's Hell a yeah. fact. They well, got right, to. So I see you got some uh some acting under your belt, dog. Like as far as your bio, when I was reading that and shit. Oh, word, word, word. Is, is that another passion, or is that just something that just came with the music? Man, that's some other shit we used to do too. Like me and my little brother, like I said earlier, me and my little brother used to really dress up and really act like we was in like in like series like, of the wire. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't bad series too. You did? Like we want some shit like that, bro. Like we was doing and then like I said, bro, no one was telling us what to do. We did it for ourselves. Like we like we even used to play wrestling and we had all the wrestling belts and shit like that. You feel yeah, me? Like yeah. acting was always acting is always one of my key things too. Like um, music's not my everything. Like music is just 
I feel like music is like a gateway. Yeah. But now, how the shit's changing now, mm-hmm. I feel like niggas would re- like respect you more if I do acting more yeah. and then put the music behind that. And then, okay. Yeah. Oh, now niggas is catching on. Now yeah. niggas, you think what I'm saying? For sure, because it's like you were talking about that, that versus battle earlier. Ludacris was like a fucking DJ at the, at the radio company like just to make his way in the music shit. Exactly. Because it's crazy because everybody does music. Yeah. So when... So when so when you tell somebody that you're a rapper, they were like, oh, this this nigga's another rapper, or oh, this nigga, you feel me? But now if you tell nigga, oh, you did a couple extra movies, or yeah. you've been in a couple movies and shit, oh, this nigga's kind of a little different. They yeah. look at you a little different, you think what I'm saying? Which is it's fucked up, but yeah. it is what it is. Like, you know, like low key though, the whole point of this podcast was to boost my music, but I'm like, damn, I like the podcast shit. You feel me? The podcast, bro, in the podcast joint, what yeah. you doing right now, the podcast is probably one of the little shit ever because Podcast has just got like just got lit with the last what two years, I yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah, it got yeah, really yeah. popping. You think what I'm saying? Yeah. Like podcast is the new wave going on. Yeah. I feel like Joe, I feel like Joe Budden really started that shit as for like for like for rappers, like just talking about shit that's going on. And there's a, a bag involved with that shit too. <laughs> nigga, if you do your business right, bro, nigga's gonna pay you. If you get enough people that gonna get in tune with your podcast, you're gonna get the bag. And so, the niggas who do the podcast now is making more than the motherfucking rappers. Man, for sure. sure. Uh, the up, the, they say the upcoming podcasters. Hell oh, yeah, the thing, bro. Hell yeah. So what about uh, with the acting dog? What what be your your dream role, dog? Uh my job. Uh, that's a good question. My dream role. I would love to play gangster, a gangster ass nigga. Um, definitely play like a gangster, and then I want to do like some gangster flicks, and yeah. then after that, I want to do some different shit that I won't even see myself doing. Like probably play like a like a teacher or play like a. Um, a doctor, yeah, or yeah. even play like a police officer, like even play like different shit that people wouldn't even expect me to play. You feel me? But yeah, like, that's my... on your ice t shirt, <laughs> on my ice t shirt, yeah. Like you feel me? Like on some shit like that, like just on, uh, like just like just different shit. And I feel like acting is such a blessing because you could really be any, like you could be like you got to fill that character role. Oh, so yeah. it's not like faking. You, you're yeah. doing like you're doing your whole job. You feel me? Which is pretty yeah, dope. Yeah. And, and 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 a lot of rappers is fucking actors, anyways. You, feel me? So, <laughs> you already know. You already niggas know. is acting. Yo, like these niggas already acting. You feel me? But when you really acting, it's all it's all it's a whole different type of feeling, and it's a whole different type of bag too. Because once you get in that scene, like once you step in, like once you clock in, you getting paid for that whole shit. You feel hell me? Yeah, hell it's it's dope. definitely money and that shit. Like. Like the music Super game, money. it used to be money, but like you said though, you gotta branch off and do different shit. It's not just music; you gotta do different shit and make money. Everything, bro, and then that's some shit I had to learn too. Cause, nigga, we know tons of fucking great artists, fucking even great rappers. Yep. Everybody can fucking rap. Everybody can know how to make a fucking melody. Everybody know how to make a song. Yeah. But it's like, how do you sell yourself? Win. You gotta sell yourself. You gotta market yourself. You feel me? Like podcast is another way to market yourself because. People probably don't want to hear your fucking music some days. Yeah. Like, they just want to hear what you're talking about. You feel me? Yep, yep, yep. So that's what, like, I had to learn, like, the last two, three years. Like, you could make all this great music, but you got to keep marked. Like, you got to keep on going. Like, people got to see, like, like that's why people do reality shows and TV shows, because you could put your brand through that. Yeah, that's a whole yeah, other yeah. type of brand. You feel me? Hell yeah. What's, what's cracking? Luxury Boy, the label was good. was good. I checked Luxury, it out. what up? Yeah, dog. But yeah, dog. Like, me and my uncle was talking about that shit. Like, sometime a fucking interview... Uh, make a nigga want to check your music out just because you got a good-ass interview, dog. For real. That's a fact. Or and sometimes, then, like, nigga, I ain't going to name no names, but I had somebody on this bitch, dog. I ain't want I, I to focus on music just because of the interview. Mm, yeah. Like, you feel yeah. me? Niggas be corny or, like, you feel me? But the moral of the story is, like, niggas will fuck with you. Like, niggas will not even hear your music and just check the interview out and be like, oh, damn, this motherfucker, he really came from the bottom. He Like, he really real. So let me go yeah. check the music out. Oh, yeah. man, like, this nigga actually got fire. Hell, yeah. Like, actually lit, you feel That's me? It. Last night, like I said, we was chilling, doing our thing, drinking and shit. I had my uncle, we listened to your shit, like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, damn, my man's straight. He got some dope-ass BZ straight, too. Uh, I appreciate that, bro. Hell, yeah, because, like, with me, though, I hate... What's up, baby? Niggas, what up? I hate when niggas, um... I hate when niggas who ain't, like, up there known send music and you give it one listen, that's it? Like, nigga... Yeah. Vibe with that shit like how you a vibe with somebody you know like a mother. right like turn the shit all the way up not just turn the shit low like maybe yeah. doing some corny shit man you did? maybe yeah. doing some real corny shit. like you said nigga your music they be like yeah bro I'm gonna bump it but they bump it not on some like getting turned up shit like they just always want to be 
just turn it like halfway up and not hard to turn it up. Go on IG Live with my shit playing in the background. You feel me? Yeah, <laughs> like nigga, play like just play where everybody nigga did zoom, like just tuning in and just yeah. check it out. Cause you like me? Nigga, just off this interview, nigga, like I'm I'm gonna for sure like pass your music out and tell niggas about you for real. That's love, bro. I appreciate you, my guy. You definitely gotta send your music to ASAP because I fuck with you. I oh, definitely yeah. love everything with what you got going on. You definitely got good positive mindset. Like you know what you want, so you gotta keep on doing it. Now it's all about just studying the whole podcast game plus the music. Like this shit, you know this shit, this shit, this shit like shit's hard, but it's easy. Like once you just get in tune with him and and fucking set you and train your mind. You feel me? You Hell train yeah. Your mind. Hell yeah. So the last question about the uh about the actor shit. Like, yeah. If it was a movie about your life, dog, what's the title gonna be? The movie about my life. Uh, what would the title would be? Um, it'd be a fucking, it'd be a couple titles. Yeah, fucking <laughs> mad titles. Rise of Power, um, Carlito's Way, the fucking third, uh, third edition. Yeah. Um, fucking <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the come up. <laughs> niggas said on the come up. Um, finessing. Fucking called it, niggas said finessing. It's, it's, man, a lot of hey, shit. Man, series. You, you got guilt on that shit, bro. Start writing some shit, dog. That's a fact, bro. I appreciate it. That's a fact. ASAP, hell yeah. Like, that's some shit I definitely want to do, too. Hell you know? Yeah. But that, I feel like when that comes, it's like when I'm already doing a couple movies already, and I meet the people that writers and yeah, shit, you know? For sure. For sure. But I appreciate that, though, bro. That's a fact. That's an old fact. I got this one thing, dog. It's called, yeah. top, it's called Top 3. I'll give you some shit. You give me your Top 3. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Two seconds. I got to get my zone for that. Oh, yeah. said top three. <laughs> <laughs> he said Top 3. Okay, I got to be focused for this one. All right, big bro, let's do it. All right, give me your uh, give me your top three rappers ever, dog. Top three rappers ever for me. How I'm feeling right now, I would say Jim Jones. Nigga, hold on, hold on, before you even go, nigga, sleep on Jim fucking Jones, bro. Uh, bro, that's my favorite artist, bro. Nigga, like, that was... he my favorite nigga on Dipset, dog. Uh, yo, that's crazy, bro. Cause it's crazy how that shit goes. That nigga was even a rapper. You yeah, feel me? Like, he was in a rapper. He was the muscle, nigga. The muscle, the goonie. You think I'm saying the couple who made sure shit was rectified, who made sure shit was right. You feel me? And then he ended up being one of the greatest out of Dipset, which is fucking super dope. Man, hell Which yeah. is super dope, bro. Which is yeah. super dope. So salute to Jimmy. Um, Jimmy, I would say, right now, I feel, bro, it's so crazy, like, not to, um, not to answer your question, but I did, like, I be doing top five and shit, right? Okay. But so every different interview I do, I name different top five rappers. Okay. Just because... Me personally, I can never just put a, like I just can't say a top five because more more like more than five rappers in, influence me. You think oh, what I'm yeah, saying? For sure, hell yeah, hell so, yeah. What I say right now, I'm gonna say Jimmy. I'm gonna say um speaking knockers. I'll be speaking knockers. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna say Chinks. Okay. Chinks drugs. I'll be Chinks. Hey, yeah, like. hey, Chinks was I, I ain't listen. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna say I listened to him before he passed away. It was after he passed away that I started peeping Chinks, dog. And he was straight though. I'm like I felt fucked up that he, his, his shit ended like that. You feel me? That shit's kind of corny, bro. And then shit like that, like, like me personally, I, I feel like it doesn't like it, it's it's it, like niggas is haters, bro. You think I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. I, like niggas is just corny ass niggas and shit. But I feel like nigga, if you gonna go out, you gonna go out like a dawn. And Chase went out like a dawn. You feel me? He went out like a movie type shit. So R.I.P. to Yay. But yeah, okay. but that's how I'm feeling today. Okay, give me, your, right uh, give me your give me your your top three uh R&B R&B singers, dog. R&B singers, top three R&B singers. I'm definitely gonna say Breezy. Okay. Um, Trigger. Um, one more. Trigger. Breezy. I fuck with Jer Jeremiah. My nigga too. Jeremiah was that guy too. Oh yeah, for um, sure. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah Jeremiah's my guy too. Um, and that motherfucker be he be writing some shit that you don't even know, nigga. Like, that's what I'm saying. That, yo, that nigga, that nigga wrote a lot of shit. Oh, Mar oh my nigga, Fresco say Mario. Mario's my nigga too. No, yeah, Mario had that motherfucking uh what's that? Um damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um the, the best friend shit too. Uh, no, it wasn't best friend, it was um love me better. Love me better. So, love you better or something. Yeah, love you better shit. Mario's that guy. Um, but one more from like Breezy Trigger. And I need some help. I need some help. Mario. Mario Duffy, uh Jeremiah. Yeah. I'm missing I'm missing somebody important though who who influenced me. Um, fuck, I'm gonna throw, fuck, I'm gonna throw Mario on there. Okay. I'm gonna throw Mario on That's how I'm feeling right now. Fuck it. Okay. And then we said, we, we talked about the hoopers right. shit, dog. Give me your top three hoopers, dog. Oh, shit. I'm gonna say AI. Allen Iverson, number one. That's my favorite player ever. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. They got, that motherfucker said trends, nigga. Trends. Hell and yeah. basketball. Hell yeah. They started out swag shit. Hell yeah. Swag shit. Um, definitely gonna say AI number one. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, just me watching the, the last dance documentary, bro, to be honest with you, like that had me a whole a whole nother opinion about Michael Jordan. Yeah. And you know, like people from my culture, I mean I'm I'm not my culture, my generation. Yeah. We always used to say LeBron's way better than Jordan. Like we always used to stick to that shit. Like we like always always like used to stick to that shit. But yeah. after the watching the last dance and not really experiencing seeing him play in person, yeah. You gotta throw Jordan in the top three because just because your favorite player, like your favorite player, like that's their favorite play, like that's what they like, that's what they learn from. You think what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. Which is fucking crazy. So I'm gonna say AI, Jordan, and then I'm gonna say um, it's either LeBron and Kobe right now, but RP the Mamba. You feel oh, me? Oh yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. RP Fuck. Big Bro. Man, that's it. I was I was doing a show when that shit happened. Like, damn, this nigga passed away. But I know you. See that shit. I know you was fucked up, man. Hell yeah, I fucked the whole that, bro. I couldn't, bro. I wouldn't, bro. I didn't want to do n- no shit for like a whole week, like three, like that shit was fucked up, bro. Like that's yeah. like, and then I'm still fucked. I just seen a Kobe documentary right now, too. Like no cat. I just seen um, it's on um, it's some shit on Muse. Yeah, like they yeah. did a documentary on them. You gotta check that out. Hell yeah, um, hell yeah. R.I.P. the Black Mamba. I'm gonna say I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw how I'm feeling today. I'm throw Kobe on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, how I'm feeling. Yeah, Kobe like. Oh, he was different. Him, him and Michael Jordan was like. Nigga said you better say Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> 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 nigga said you better say Kobe. All right, Shout my, my nigga side street sticky. This is my last one. This is my last one for the top three, dog. Uh huh. Give me your top three childhood crushes, dog. Chicks you was feeling uh, as a kid. Oh, uh, oh, uh, child. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. You know my whistle. She's here, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna get in soon with that, but you know. No, no, no. Not no girl. I'm talking about like actors and shit, like like actresses, like rappers and shit, like girls. Oh, um, I'm gonna say Christina Million. Okay. I'm really like Christina Million. I used to say that's her. Yeah. Um, Christina Million. Megan Good was one of another one. That's a for sure. <laughs> Megan Good was lit. Um, Christina Million, Megan Good. Who else? I like. I like that. <laughs> Fucking beautiful, beautiful. You dig what I'm saying? But yeah. oh, see, my man, uh, your man's got my uh, your man's got say? my my three right there. Shanti Neil on Megan Good. Nigga, that's a fact right there. But niggas, what niggas wasn't on Shanti's back like like how no, on her back now? I'm not gonna lie, you on her was, back now? You was, was on her back before? Her, when she was on that ja Rule, on that ja Rule shit, nigga, I was on yeah. it, dog. Oh, Neil Long, yeah, Neil Long, Neil Long. That's like when she had the shortcut joint. That's a fact, nigga. Hell yeah, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey. She was in that motherfucking movie with um, who she the movie when when she took this whole shit off and the nigga wasn't trying to splash it. Damn, the um, the, the best man I think, or some oh, yeah, shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He crazy for that, for real. Oh, even um, fucking Tanaya Lathan. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we got forty eight seconds. I'm gonna tap you right back in. Cause I got one last question before we done. Ah, uh, well, let's do it, boy. That's a All fact. Right. Yeah, my boy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yo, you got the dip set, boy. I, I need yeah, you. Fuck with it. That's your fire, right? <laughs> I got the Fuliano mask on deck too. Oh yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? so I've been branding with that. I've been branding with the Fuliano mask. I've been branding oh, with yeah. the uh, Fuliano trays for my you know we smokers or we want to throw some shit on there. Break, oh, yeah, yeah. break some shit down. We got all that shit. Hell yeah, yeah. Speaking of weed smokers, oh, I got uh, my, my brother got some shit that you gotta <laughs> tap in with. You say fool? I said my brother got some shit you gotta tap in with too. It's shit called the classic pothead. Oh, ASAP. I mean, I don't. I used to be a, a heavy smoker, but now, bro, I can't even smoke no more like that. I smoke sometimes, but yeah. nigga, I should be making me stiff. Uh, I can't make I can't do shit. <laughs> Jay, I'll be slow. Hey, hey, speaking of dog, the last topic I usually do is uh, how moment a drunk moment, dog. Give me a a, a funny ass story. Oh, you got the little trays? Man, I got the trays, Jay. Three gossip, oh, yeah. what up? You know, I got the black blunt. You, know, I'm about to sing you oh. some shit, bro. Oh yeah, for sure. You know I mean? so we, I'm definitely gonna tap in with you, though, after this shit, for real. That's a fact. That's a fact. You saying, bro, high moment, drunk moment? Yeah, like a, like a, like I usually go for a funny story when you was high, or you was drunk, dog. Man, I'm gonna keep a hundred with you, man. Fresco friends, he's on here too, right? It's, my, it's one of my best friends, right? We talked about him earlier. Yeah. Um, this nigga, we uh, we first like this is the first time I ever, ever, ever smoked. You think I'm saying? Ever oh, smoked. Yeah. And then meet us, and this nigga lived right across the street from me, like literally like right across the street from me. So um, that's how we got cool and shit. We got, you know, turned out to be back friends and shit like that. Um, yeah. This is the first time I'm, I ever fucking smoked. So, <laughs> so this is, so um, this is whole, so this is a whole big fucking thing of us. So he he was hitting his boy up to grab some shit, you know, and we ended up finally grabbing some shit. Yeah. So long story short, his dad, his dad, his dad was upstairs. 
Um, nigga, we got so hot. Nigga, this nigga was... Uh, we was doing some stupid shit. I just think it was goofy in my head. Nigga, I was yeah. doing some shit. Like, some, some, some stupid young nigga shit. And then his dad, um, his dad gave us some money to go to the store and shit like that. You know, his dad was lit that night, too. <laughs> the store fucked up. We making fucking stupid ass videos and shit. We went to the store. His dad told us to go to the store to go grab him a fucking, uh, a fucking sub or some chicken wings or some shit. So, like, something like that. Man. And, um, nigga, we end up eating the whole shit. <laughs> we end up eating the whole shit and have nothing, not like we had nothing for him. You know what I'm saying? Niggas high shit, made mad videos. This nigga was goofy and me, smacking my head like just on some fucking um jackass yeah. type of shit. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? I look at that shit and I'm like, bro, you ain't never doing that shit again. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never doing that shit again. I don't know what the fuck you. I don't know what the fuck. I, 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 oh. nigga, I was coughing. Nigga, I can't. Nigga, for my first first two three pulls, I was coughing crazy. Nigga, my other thing, Pepsi. This nigga had a Pepsi. I'm like, yo, bro, give me the Pepsi. I can't breathe, nigga. I was fucking panicking. Man. All that shit, bro. Nigga, I had, I had that shit happen to me last fucking week, nigga. Like, <laughs> 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 nigga, I was sitting here off a of, off of motherfucking edible, bro. Oh, my God. Yo, nigga, like, the ed- oh, I'm going to tell you something after. Oh, oh now nah, go, go, go. I'm going to tell you something after about the edible. Edible is different. Dog, dog, my thing is, like, Nigga, like, this whole corona shit that had a nigga bored. So I'm like, me and my cousin, like, dog. Trying all new shit. That nigga, I'm like, nigga, let's try, some, let's try something different. Nigga, like, like <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, nigga, I ain't smoked before, but I'm like, dog, let's get edible, dog. So this nigga, he bring me an edible, dog. So I, I take a little piece at like 4.30, dog. So then I ain't feeling that shit. So 6 o'clock, I take another dumbass piece. Nigga, nigga, I'm getting scared of everything. My son, I got a three year old son, nigga. He was scaring the fuck out of me, dog. I'm running <laughs> this shit, dog. Nigga, this nigga took the edible with son. <laughs> dog, because it's, it's me, my girl, and my two kids. Right, you just cooling, nigga. You, nigga, you in the crib. You in the crib. Fuck, this ain't this gonna be nigga, nothing. This little nigga started chasing me, bro. I'm getting scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> nigga, I'm in that bitch. He jumped on my like, dog. Why is this nigga jumping like that, dog? Like, this Yo. nigga. Got me tripping. The nigga. highest. It took my brother, dog. I called my brother. This nigga calmed me down like, shy, nigga. You just, your whole body hot, nigga. You ain't got no hair high. Your whole body hot. Yeah, you can't move, nigga. You not retarded, bro. Nigga, nigga bro. So, what about to say? What you about to say? No, so once I talked to that nigga, I finally calmed down a little bit, nigga. I laid on my girl leg and went to sleep, nigga. Like, it, it was a wrap, no. Bro, nigga said, bro, them edible shit, bro. Mind you, like I said, I don't smoke like that no more. But I took an edible... I think like last summer and nigga, I was high as shit. My eyes was fucking red as fuck. My girl looking at me like, yo, this nigga is crazy, taking pictures of me and shit. Like, I wish I had a picture. I would have sent that shit to you, but nigga, I was high nigga. as fuck, bro. Nigga, I couldn't move. I couldn't do none of that shit. That shit was yeah, like, I don't know. I, I, like, shout out to the stoners. Shout, like, shout out to my stoners and shit, but nigga, me, I'm gonna say, nigga, bro, I can't get high. Cause nigga, if I get high, bro, I can't do shit. I be on my ass. Like dog, that's what shit. I wish, I wish I could smoke like niggas be smoking, dog. Cause <laughs> but I can't fucking do it, bro. Like nigga, it's been time I smoke, nigga. I, I'm like me and you together. Say we, me and you together. I'm thinking for you, nigga. How you thinking about me? <laughs> <laughs> like nigga, I'm fucked up, nigga. Like fucked for real, up. nigga can't move, can't do shit, boy. Like I can't drive, I can't, I can't think, I can't fucking nigga. talk, nigga. Like bro, I don't know how nigga be just getting high all day. But now nigga, nigga. we in the crib. Ain't shit to do unless nigga ain't shit to do but get high. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, for real, nigga. For real, dog. Because once I get off here, the only thing I'm about to do is try to look and see somebody barbecuing, nigga, and go drink and pull that's up. A, nigga. That's a fact. The weather's nice and shit, too. You dig? Yo, get some yeah, good we, food in. We can be like outside. That. We can be outside and fucking distance each other and eat some good food, nigga. That's a fact, bro. That's a fact. That's a whole yeah. fact, my brother. Man, what, man, what can niggas, uh, what can niggas follow you? What can niggas find your music? All that. Yeah, you can follow me, you know, um, everything's Kize Fuliano Music, you dig? So you can see the name, K-double-E-Z-A-Y-F-O-O-L-I-A-N-O Music. Uh, that's on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, um, YouTube, SoundCloud, everything's Kize Fuliano Music. I just dropped an EP called uh, Just Fooling Around. Go um, stream down on Spotify, Apple Music and shit like that. Shit's still going up. I think I got like 100,000 streams on that bitch. So it was going to be working. Um, food season is definitely on the way. we we'll be cooking up. And for all my pot smokers, all my weed smokers, we got the Fuliana motherfucking trades and shit like that on deck. Um, for niggas who staying, you know, trying to stay quarantined, trying to stay free, need some masks. Because I see them blue masks now looking at swag. You need swag out with your mask now. So I got the Fuliana. Because you already know, nigga, even when niggas open shit up, niggas still going to keep that mask with, on. Yeah, you got to, bro, this shit going to be like this for a minute, bro. It's going to be like this for, it's going to be like this shit for a minute. 
Yeah. You know, like, like it gonna be like this for a minute, bro. It ain't gonna be like, and nigga, if you wanna be safe, you go, nigga, you better wear a fucking mask. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's the fact. Sure. But we, I got yeah. the auto mask on deck and shit like that. Um, you know, just stay in tune, man. We logging on, blogging on, we swagging up, and we, you know, and we bagging up. You know what I'm saying? That's really it. Trust my man, Chad, oh, though. Shout out to everybody podcast. That nigga doing this motherfucking thing. Well, you, hey, when you drop that uh the next EP, dog, definitely gotta bring it back on. Talk about that shit, dog. Mm-hmm. That's a fact, though. Like I said, nigga if you said, in the I'm D, I'm still down at something <laughs> If you if you in the D, nigga, or if I'm in uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what nigga said. I was scared because nigga was chasing me. Yo, nigga was some chucky shit. Hell yeah. So nigga, hey, if you ever in the D dog, I'm I'm ever in Boston, nigga, definitely gotta link up, dog. Bro, whenever, bro, even if nigga, even if you meet Miami or me, whatever, bro, it's always love. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Sure. Definitely send me your whole music and stuff like that. I would definitely appreciate you for having me. Oh yeah, um, nigga. Even we got to go ahead and shit, collab or some shit, dog. I yeah, I'm I'm that with thing. it. I got the studio on deck, so just send that shit over whenever, bro. Um sure. so definitely shout out to Chad um everybody rest the podcast. That's just you definitely wanna come up, bro. Keep doing your thing, keep getting these artists on here, you know what I'm saying? And it keeps pushing out, bro, because you definitely got the right mindset. You definitely know what you want. So you got to keep on doing what you're doing, bro. I appreciate that, dog. You feel me? I appreciate that, for real. That's a fact, though. That's a fact. Yeah, man. But shit, man, until next time, dog, shit, I I get with you, bro. Definitely. That's a fact, my guy. All All right. right. All right, bro. Stay safe, baby. Oh, yeah. You too, boy. Man, all his uh, followers, shit, go follow me. All my followers, go follow him, man. Y'all be safe.